now. Head lice, it's not a fun topic, but it's something that most parents have dealt with or will deal with as their child heads to school. So this morning, I'm joined by Sarah Casello reese She's the owner of Rapunzel Lice Boutique. I like the name of that. Talk to us about some of the misconceptions of head lice. Well, one of the most common misperceptions is that um, dirty people get sure. head lice, so that it has some, something to do with hygiene. And actually, it's quite the opposite. Um, lice prefer clean, healthy hair. And it can affect anybody. Anybody can get it. Any socioeconomic class can get it. We see it, we see it everywhere. Um, other misconceptions is how head lice are contracted. Most people are quick to blame their environment, the, okay. the movie theater, or you know somebody hung a coat next to somebody else's at school. But really, about 99% of the time, head lice are acquired through direct head-to-head -head contact. Lice do not fly, they do not jump. They can barely crawl, as a matter of fact, mm. off the human head. So what do we do to prevent this from happening to our kids? Well, the best prevention is to avoid head-to-head -head contact. Okay. Now, of course, that's difficult with children because mm -hmm. if you watch children at play, their heads are constantly together. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can contain the hair, that's going to be your, your best defense right there. We recommend that girls wear their hair um, either in a braid if possible or in a bun, pulled back as much as possible so it's not flying around. Mm -hmm. Uh, boys with short hair, that's not an option, of course. So if you can dirty up the hair by putting in a product, for instance, a gel, okay. um, preferably if you have an oil-based product, that's great because lice, like I said, prefer clean hair. And if there's oil in the hair, it mimics dirt. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's difficult for the lice to affix their eggs to the hair shaft. So the CDC says that 6 to 12 million American kids get head lice every year. That's a significant amount. This isn't something to freak out about if you're a parent, isn't that so? Well, it, they tell you not to. Okay. In, in fact, most schools now try to keep kids in school, and they don't want to exclude a child because of head lice. It's not the bubonic plague. It's uh, lice don't spread disease. Okay. So what? why keep kids home? That's what they think. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's a big problem. Although it may not spread disease, it is a, you know, it, it's a huge social impact on families. Uh, when p kids miss school, parents miss work, they spend a lot of money on products that don't work. And so, um, I forgot what your question was. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk, um, more, we'll talk more about this Yes, uh, coming up. Sure, absolutely. All right. All right. Now we continue our discussion on head lice, prevention, and getting rid of it this morning. It's a real concern for parents as kids head back to school. I'm joined again by Sarah casella reese the owner of Rapunzel Lice Boutique. Okay, Sarah, so once our kids do get head lice, how do we get rid of it? Well, traditionally, families would go to the drugstore mm -hmm. and they would buy one of the over-the-counter preparations, RID, NYX, or the generic um, alternative. Um, there's also prescription remedies and home remedies. Okay. However, head lice have been building up a resistance to the pesticides in these products. So what 20 years ago killed 95% of lice is currently only killing 45% of lice. Oh. And that's not the eggs, those are the live bugs. Okay. So if you have 100 live bugs in your head, it's only going to kill 45 of those, and that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And it does not kill the eggs, and those are called nits. Yep. And so if you don't pick out every last little egg, it's you, gonna be It's bad. gonna start all over again. So what is this? Well, th <laughs> this really is a revolutionary product here. It was an invented, it's called the Louse Buster, it was invented by a University of Utah parasitologist, and what it does is, although it looks like a vacuum cleaner, mm -hmm. it's actually like a big blow dryer, and it blasts the lice with a high velocity um, air that's cooler than a hair dryer, so it doesn't burn the scalp, Okay. but it effectively desiccates the lice. That just means dehydrates them. And in clinical trials published in 2006 in Journal Pediatrics, um, it killed 99.2% wow. of the eggs. 99.2, nothing does that. That's pretty high. So that's it for is. the head. It is. What about our bedding and our towels? What can we do? Well, um, the, the, the good thing about head lice, people don't think there's anything good about them, no. but the good thing is they spend their entire life cycle on your head. Okay. There's no part of their life cycle that involves your house. They do not want to leave your head because your, your head is their lunch. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're eating, they're breeding, they're laying their eggs, they're, you know, all of that on your head. 
Unlike bed bugs that can survive for up to six months without a blood meal, uh, a louse will perish within 24 to 48 hours without blood. Okay. And so a louse is not going to voluntarily leave your head to go to your house. There's, there's no point in that. However, if a louse were dislodged in some way, it could survive for that 24 to 48 hours. So it's prudent to change any um, sort of bedding, towels, okay. recently worn clothing, anything that's come in contact with the head within the last 24 to 48 hours. Sarah, I'm feeling much better about this situation <laughs> as my little girls go to school with their Rapunzel-like right? hair. Um, and, and I'm glad to see also that there are some preventative products yes. out there, all natural, not the pesticides that we remember from um, our childhood years. Good information this morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us.